church does not sound good enough good evening church hallelujah welcome to inspiration thursday i thought you'd give the lord a big hand for that hallelujah i thank god because sometimes around last year a privilege to have pastor and he is here again tonight and that's something to thank god for one whole year and challenges is hot thank god that welcome pastor talk with Baba please bring pastor here bring him to his seat please keep clapping Please keep clapping. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Friendship. Oh. I'm happy to. Good move. Hallelujah. Just whatsoever God has put in His mind. I mean, it's it's significant. I mean. Pastor Dokwe is the pastor of Grace Court. Uh, this is the first time I'm seeing him physical. This is the first time. This is the first time. Um, but I've always, one day he chatted me on Facebook. We were running a pure language congress sometimes last year, and he said, I will come. Ah. I said, okay, so. so I, I, the day you came to Bishop Bolaji's church, I targeted to make that meeting. But one thing came up, I wanted to surprise you too. So, but the surprise finally came from your side. Thank you again. Thank you again. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, let me give you three scriptures. Set up. When? First Corinthians 14, 10, and 11. 1 Corinthians 14, 10, and 11. There are, it may be, so many kinds of languages in the world, and none of them is without significance. Verse 11. Therefore, if I do not know the meaning of the language, I shall be a foreigner to him who speaks, and he who speaks will be a foreigner to me. Timothy, what's your tribe? Jerry. So say good evening in Jerry. That's from Plato State. Hmm? Irene Shambo. Now, if you met him on the road and he just said that, if you are not careful, you might think maybe it's not even okay. Because he's saying a language that makes a whole meaning to him, but makes no meaning to you. See, let me tell you certain things you are going to hear tonight. You are going to hear the word church. There's nothing you can do about it. If Pastor Dick is preaching, you're going to hear church, you're going to hear body of Christ, you're going to hear destiny, you're going to hear assignment. That's his language. And uh, I thank God that 
You know, recently we had a program and a young pastor came. And in the midst of the program, I had some of my friends preach. So they preached first session. So I just ran it up. And the man came to me in the office and said, are you an apostle? I said, I said, there are certain things that are best defined by what they are not. I said, I know I'm not an evangelist. At least I've nullified that one. I said, I'm a pastor. He said, no. He said, your message is not a pastoral message. He sat there for one hour. Just said, said this. Because every language has its significance. And if you don't meet your tribe, when you are speaking your language, you will seem like a stranger to somebody else. There are some of us that every time we are talking, people say, there are so many of us that when we came to church here tonight, the only thing in our mind is our present issue. It looks like that's God's agenda. Does it not look like it? If God can pay this rent, I will know I'm his son. So, but occasionally you come to a church where the pastor has some very strange bodies. In 2 Corinthians 11, from verse 22 to 28, Paul was speaking about persecutions. He said that the Hebrews he spoke about things he has gone through among foreigners, three days under the sea, stone. Then he mentioned a strange infirmity. Look at verse 27 and 28. We understand weariness, you know, in weariness and toil, sleeplessness, often hunger and thirst, fastness, often in cold and nakedness. Beside other things, what comes daily upon me daily? My deep concern. You can understand the persecution of toil needs, but how many people understand the burden of their deep concern? For them? Some people are as afflicted concerning the state of the church like when you are in need. You didn't get what I just said there. The way when you don't have money troubles you is the way they look into the body of Christ and what they see works them up. So tonight I have come, my friend has come to speak to me because I will hear church. Because some of you don't, you know the only thing you hear. Next level, my God will turn my seed around. No, those things are good. But there is a point of this agenda that we are troubled when you are good church members, but you don't understand that the kingdom of God is a boundless global community. And that what God is doing in your life is a subset of what God is doing in the entire body of Christ. We are burdened sometimes. You know? And it takes time to communicate such body. You remember in Haggai chapter 1. That's the body of Haggai. Haggai said, you people keep saying the time has not come to build the house of God. But you keep building your own houses. Mm -hmm. So the person that comes and is talking about the house of God is like a foreigner to somebody that says, let me first settle my own house. What is the most important body? And that guy now said, you know, that's the problem. He said, that's why you labor. You put it in bag with O's. Telling them that when you even take your eyes away from that which God is doing, it even affects that which you are following. Which you think is very important to you. So tonight, it's about the body. I, no matter what Pastor Dickpo wants to say, that's what he will say. Because those are his concerns. No, Pastor Dickpo sometimes will call me from the UK and all he's saying is, so I is church. So, you know, what is the frequency flowing out of the country now? I said, like, what's this man's problem? What can, even the people here don't know whether there's any frequency flowing out of anywhere. They are just thinking of, let God answer. He said, what's the frequency? What, what? It's as if God is beginning to raise certain voices. I say, even me sometimes I say, can you just give yourself rest? But it's an apostolic body sometimes to be filled with certain concerns for the body of Christ. That's why I'm not moved when I saw his first book. 
this is his book and he just come and and i think this is this is the first congregation that is in this book i thought you give the lord a bigger father tools and layers of spiritual maturity say tools and layers of spiritual maturity another word you will hear this evening is balance anybody i mean who can testify this book will teach you about balance and priorities you know and your assignment so pastor dickboy is here tonight to be a blessing to us to speak to us about balance and assignment we have copies of this book here and i don't know i because when i was asking him when i when i did my own book i was selling it for three thousand you know how much they said this book and i look at this book. maybe there is a maybe there is a subsidy because the book is one thousand because pastor Dipo is burdened about you getting the message you must mature so the next time i'm talking about the church you will i will not be sounding like that man that spoke jerry language to you some people wait till when i'm about to finish this afternoon, I say, okay tonight the lord bless you the lord keep you say yes that's my own when i'm going to that jewel thing they... pastor Dipo will help you tonight you will come up say i'm ready to come up either so with jesus joy tonight and with reference to the grace of god let's welcome pastor dipo apanishile as he speaks to us the word of god hallelujah come on put your hands together let's give jesus praise in the house tonight praise god thank you thank you hallelujah somebody have my ministry if this can face me a little bit it will it will have my ministry hallelujah father in the name of jesus we come to you the way we are giving glory and honor to your name appreciating you for your mercy and we ask so god tonight that you just help us oh help us father help us we ask help us help us give us capacity to receive to retain and be able to release in the days to come and bless your people in jesus mighty name Thank you. Please, let's have a seat. Praise God. It's good to be back. Come on. I'm glad to be back. Praise God. I'm looking at the faces. I'm looking at the faces I saw last year. I'm also seeing again. God bless you. Really good. Yeah, I can see those faces. Hallelujah. God bless you in Jesus' name. Come on, let's honor Pastor Move. Move International. Amen. One of the one of the things I'm concerned about in my work with God is the word loyalty. I believe so much that when people are good to you, and when God leads you or connect with people, we have to be loyal to them, and that's what I am to pursue. Move. Um, it's been a long journey. It's over twenty years now, and I I honour them deeply. Um, I was somebody who was talking to me today, you know. So when when I tell people publicly, I know not people, I love people. They are wondering why, and I was just looking at Pastor Move, and I remember that my first open door on campus those days, he gave me the privilege to preach. That's the days of the uh, request of God Network, you know. I remember I was using one Jeremiah book of Jeremiah to preach in those days, and uh, it's been a long journey. Thank you so much, man of God. Come on, let's give God praise for. God servant. And to Pastor Tokwe, it's so good seeing you for the first time. I know you look very a bit cl close to Pastor Jimmy, which is also for many years. So I think through him, I saw you on Facebook and I said, oh, this man, actually your hairstyle, your simplicity. And, um, and there's a way you, you are humble and you honor men. I've seen that again and again, because I, at least... I studied the body of Christ. <laughs> I know what's that. Now, thanks so much for coming tonight. Come on, let's give God praise for that. Amen. So, greetings from His Influence Church United Kingdom and greetings to my wife. I know my wife is watching me right now. She's my number one fan. And I'm not saying that because I'm married to her, it's because she deserves it. Come on, put your hands together. Give my wife some love. Praise God. 
Let's get in the business of today. It's cut out to seven. I don't intend to spend much time with you, but um, I hope that her discussion is going to generate a burden. Let's do Luke chapter, chapter 3. Luke chapter 3. Let's do from verse 8 to verse, verse 12. Luke chapter 3, verse 8 to verse 12. The Bible says, Therefore bear fruit worthy of repentance, and do not begin to say to yourself, We have Abraham as our father, for I say to you that God is able to raise up Abraham, raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Ah, I will not be replaced. Next verse. And even now the axe is laid at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit, mark that what good fruit is caught and thrown into the fire. Verse 10. So the people asked him. So there was a kingdom order, there was a new terrain, there was a mantle that was on this man called um, John the Baptist. So he came in and was declaring. The first thing was to rebuke them. The second thing is to set the stage what is expected of God. But when the guy was giving a lot of ideas of what God wants to do, the people have to interrupt him. And say, guy, you were just telling us we should bear fruit. What should we do? As in, give us specifics. So the people asked him, what shall we do? Then he answered them, he said, you has two tonics or clothes, let him give him to who has none. And he who has food, let him what? Come on, are you with me? Yes. And verse 12 too, the task collectors also came in and said to him, Tisha, what shall we do? Then he gave him an answer. He said, collect, do not collect more than what is appointed for you. I want to talk on something very simple. But it's fundamental in the body of Christ. And um, if you go to if we go to some other countries, we we'll say let's package it and give it a topic that is so cash. Ah, the dynamics of resources, you know. And I say, ah, first off, what deep gone. <laughs> I want to talk to you about giving. Does that word giving? Apparently, God inspired me to discuss this with you, and I'm just praying. That is going to give us wisdom in Jesus' name. Ladies and gentlemen, when you become born again, you must understand that selfishness or self-love is common. And it is possible to be in the church for 10 years and you're still selfish. And the goal is not to give you a word or to rebuke you, just to bring you to a path to understand some of the burdens of God, especially for the body of Christ. If we were to walk about, talk about statistics today, even in Africa and on some countries, in fact, it's worse where we are. Stinginess is a common commodity in the church. Stinginess. The word stinginess is just thinking about you and you alone are more conscious about the ability to receive than the ability to give. And I know when I talk about the word giving, thank God for the kind of ministry we hear in. You might think I'm already preparing a platform for a prophet offering. <laughs> in which after the service, so, oh, you know, you know, less, and you know, and before I even go into that, the book has been paid for by the grace of God. So I went to Highland, I preached, I was in a lunch with the pastor, and in my spirit, I began to hear a vibe. God saying to me, the honorarium they gave to you, without counting it, give it to the person that hosted you. And without counting it, I got into the car. Before I, I just told the guy, before I gave him the money, <laughs> I, received an, I received a message. Pastor, this book you want to do, which account should we drop the money? Amazingly, between that time, till I got to the airport to bought my flight back to UK, one million came in, which is what produced the book. So I'm not under prayer. So I'm sharing that with you is that when we talk about giving, some of us over the years have been able to experience the fruit of it. I live in UK by the grace of God. I'll be 10 years in UK this year. I was working in Nigeria collecting 3.6 million per annum when I dropped it for ministry. So I'm not part of the Japa generation. You, you understand what I'm saying? Some of us will live by instruction. Where we are today is as a result of deploying the specific order of the spirit 
That's an ability to switch us and create a new atmosphere in our lives in the realm of the spirit. Then the result is common in the natural. This is not a message of competing of how much resources you have. I'm building a doctrine in your heart to know that stinginess is not a commodity that is acceptable in the kingdom. Are you with me? There are three sets of people who understand my voice. There's a generation that, is, that needs to break that code and switch from that dimension in which you struggle to yield to the spirit when it comes to resources. But there's also another generation that is saying, God, I know I do this thing. I don't know why it's not working for me. And without praying for you, I can tell you that things will switch this year in Jesus' name. Your amen is not born again. And God said, I should tell some of you that the levels you are here right now is as a result of some of the things that your parents have deployed, whether positive or negative. He said, when will you start building for the next generation? And let me tell you, if you are not sincere with yourself, you will think that the fact that you are receiving is a sign that you are in alignment with God. It's not only God that is a giver. Are you still with me? So John came in to prepare the way and make the path straight for Jesus. And one of the major doctrines was trying to lay is to tell the people that, look, I know definitely that you should be repent, you know, repent. And the question is, what's this definition of repentance? Oh, Father, I, I, I forgive my sin. He said it's beyond that. It's a change of mind. It's a shift in thinking pattern. He said, but for that to be specific, what should we do? He said, let him that has to give out one. Are you, are you with me? Yes. He said, let him that has to give out one. He said, you that is collecting excess. For sure. And some of you understand my voice. They say, Pastor, preach that. I like preach it. God, that brother in church, I've been asking him to help me. He has no answer. So now, after the service, he has no choice. But you that are saying that you are the one I'm dealing with. Because we are not dealing with emotional giving here. I know definitely Nigerians, I don't know what is level, but the last report I got said there are a lot of stingy people in church today. In UK, it's worse. Hey, what's up, girl? How are you doing? You're looking shammy. <laughs> you know, let's just shit. We are relatives. And you have to honor people that you know now, have you? Is there an opportunity? <laughs> you know? In UK, it's, it's even when it comes to finances, it's even worse. And some people, they will expect receipts on 10 pounds. Yeah? You say, Pastor, did you acknowledge what I sent? The way you open the account, you are looking for their body. You can't, you can't find it. And the people that are giving the most, they are the ones that will never accept thank you from you. To let you know that there is something we need. Especially if you are young, under the sound of my voice. Now, I don't intend to teach this thing, but let me just give you some background. Are you still with me? I'm not talking to you tonight about how to give the subject matter. I'm not talking to you about where to give. It's a subject matter. I'm not talking to you even about when to give, whether it's the beginning of the month or end of the month. I'm not even talking to you about how much to give. I'm not even talking to you about to whom you should give. Because I celebrated my birthday last week. Somebody gave me an enable. It's a prophet of it. Everything is to connect anointing. Everything. Just I tap, I tap, I tap. So when will it be deep post money? That everything is just withdraw something. So when he said prophet of it, so the, the envelope was by the bed, and when I slept, I woke up middle of the night. In my mind, that money, that envelope is supposed to, I might just give it to your wife. So I gave the money to my wife. So whatever he's trying to tap from me. <laughs> and it's because people are not taught. And it's so difficult to discuss giving on the pulpit like this. So he's a guest speaker and he's talking about giving. Kai! Kind of God, it's not fair. That Nigerian legon has no le. Who le? So, how much to give, when to give, where to give, how to give, to whom we give. It's not the issue. Even the returns on giving. Because now we have turned God to an investment banker. In which you, on one side, you give offering, you use your flat to collect it. Then on the, on the other side, you give, then you, <laughs> you give, you expect, you know, I mean, in front of, this is faith friends, so you call it a spade a spade. We are not saying that you should, you, 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 you are operating at your level of revelation. Our job is to upgrade it. 
Because some of you, you are bigger than this. But where fearism in the body of Christ has caged your mindset to a point whereby your heart is, 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 is it cannot be exploded again. Some of you at your level, your mind is so close that you can't think multi-millions. If they tell you, they say, yay, yeah, it will never happen. Because you don't understand that the word giving. Now, let me say, go, go, go with me to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. If you are with me, say yes. yes. Come on, you need to be with me tonight. Hallelujah. Give me Matthew chapter 6, verse 2. Matthew chapter 6, verse 2. Um, give me King James. Give me King James. Just King James, not King, New King James. King James. Excuse me. I will say, when thou doest your hands, which is giving, give me a version that uses the word giving. I don't want to use, uh, just give me a version that uses the word giving. Yeah, thank you. New Living Translation. But I will say, when you give to someone, somebody say, when you give. That's verse 2. Go to verse 3. Verse 3. When you what? Go to verse 6. Verse 6. When you what? Go to verse 5. Go to verse 5. Back of verse 5. When you what? Go to verse 17. When you what? So, when Jesus is trying to build doctrine, when he came in now, you remember John the Baptist was talking majorly about one. Giving. He was fasting. His disciples were fasting. Jesus' guys came, they were not fasting. Right? He was praying, definitely. Jesus taught them to pray, too. But when Jesus was writing Matthew 6, it was red letter. There is no contribution from any top part. Even the writer did not contribute to Matthew 6. There are three major fundamental backgrounds that opens the shyness of spirit. He said, when you give, when you pray, and when you fast. One of the worst things you can do as an imbalanced generation is to say, I like one more than the other. It's like building a house and putting blocks but no cement. Are you with me? Yes, sir. When you what? Give. When you what? Pray. When you what? If, if, if you're under the sound of my voice and you, you say, oh, I've been born again, everyone is close by me. I don't pray. Or I pray God is not answering me. My, my spiritual level is zero. Don't be seeking a counter. You are too far. When you give, when you pray, when you fast, these are the foundation. And there is no anointing that will erase it. There is no dimension to the spirit. There is no hey, yeah, yeah, that will erase that one. When you give, when you pray, when, can I tell you one statement that will help you? In that order. In what? In that order. In order, well, let, me, let me tell you something that I've discovered in my work with God. If you are not, if you don't deal with the aspect of giving, you cannot execute some agenda in the spirit in the realm of prayer. Check it. Anybody that is stingy cannot have effective prayer life. Can I say that again? Oh, I said anyone that is selfish cannot execute a tangible agenda in the spirit. Because some of us don't understand that in the realm of giving, money, cash is the least. Time is more expensive than time. But when you're a younger generation, you don't believe that. It's just that when you're in your 30s or 20s, progress is important. When you hit 40, you will know that peace is more expensive than progress. Are you with me? When you, when you got married in 20s and your wife is misbehaving, you say, I'm the husband of this. Earth. When you clock 40, you need the atmosphere and the frequency you have to be calm. So even when it's your fault, even when it's not your fault, you apologize because peace must, <laughs> peace must reign. So one of the things that God is saying to this generation and to the body of Christ is the enemy knows that these are fundamentals in the kingdom so it comes by time to fight it in the body of Christ. You know there are times that you fight prayers. Even to date, it's not how long you pray, you know, when you just talk to God, he hears God everywhere. Don't do your morning devotion. After two or three years, you will know that you are empty. Yeah, you are empty. So any God hears God, then God can hear prayer everywhere. In addition to praying somewhere. That makes sense. So it's not about fasting, you know. 
Probably what you are carrying is light. <laughs> oh Lord, have mercy. So when you give, hmm? when you pray, and when you fast. So when God says you are born again, come into the kingdom, the first dealing of the spirit is no ability to pray. It's no ability to fast. It's ability to give. Because if God deals with selfishness in your heart, he knows that he can commit intercessory grace upon your life. Are you with me? Go do your study. This is doctrine. Do your study. Find any man that is effective in prayer and is stingy. In fact, the reason you see some prophet misbehaving today and the word they can do is to collect and do all of these things is because they, did, they escaped that school of the spirit. They escaped that school of the spirit. Are you still with me? Yes, sir. I want to, I want to just flow. Let's leave notes. Are you with me? So I have the mandate of the Lord this year. As I finished preparing for 2023, a body came on me. He said, confront selfishness in the body of Christ and stinginess. And I have that level of audacity and boldness to look at you. I say, you are stingy. Uncle, you are stingy. And it's for your good. And you say, PD, are you talking about title offering? That's your own personal religion we got. The issue is, I, my concern is that you must not be a dead sea. You must not be a dead sea. Can I say something to you? You guys are not responding. Not responding. You're not responding. But well, you are better than UK. So I'm used to I'm used to I'm used to I'm used to you. I'm 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 used I'm used to you. I'm used to you. If you say you are growing in God and you are excited about your relationship with God, and God has not taken you through the manner of giving. You have created a gap in your work with God that will affect you in future. Are you with me? If I one of the things that touches me, let me quote a scripture and we move on. Are you still with me? Yes, Bible says in Acts of Apostle, Jesus does not have permission to express himself in Acts of Apostle because the Acts of Apostle is a terrain where the Holy Spirit speaks. Are you with me? Am I doing well, sir? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. At least if I have a supporter's club. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus make an interrupted act of apostles and he said to Paul that it is better to give than to receive. That word giving there is not ability to take money out of your pocket and drop it on the other. It means to yield. The word yield is a terminology that anyone working with the spirit cannot escape. It means what? To yield. Ability to respond to the promptings of the Spirit. To yield. What I'm saying to you is that if you close your hands, you close your destiny. And God, does, God will always test you with natural things before he moves you to spiritual things. If God cannot trust your pocket, he can't trust your spiritual gifts. Are you with me? Yeah. Yield. Let me pause and address something so that we can put a bit of balance into this. Oh, I used the word. <laughs> put a balance to In your work with Jesus, don't give him time for reward. God is no more whatever a man is so he reaps. Don't give time. Somebody came to church and paid tithe for the first time. Then the next week, he took a car that does not have a um, driver license and drove and hit a house. And she now came and said, do I tight? Because we've turned God to security officer in which who wants to pay that money. The first thing I want to understand is that before you came to this thing, God has been financing his work. After you are done, you will com continue. Are you with me? In fact, some of you don't know that the last time you refused to give was not noticed. Because one of the things the Holy Spirit does in the body of Christ, one of the ma this is why giving is essential. One of the major things the Holy Spirit does in the body of Christ is that he has capacity to move resources from surplus unit to deficit unit. Right. I'm telling you, and if you don't yield, you are delaying the entire program of God in the body of Christ. So God can be here and inspire you to do something for you. Because if you do it for her, 
One day, what you did, we produce food that we do it for her. You delay in obedience in reading, it affects her program, it affects her program. And the Holy Spirit is crying, who will go for us? Just because you do not eat. Do not eat. Do not eat. I might not have time to share testimony, but I can tell you some things we have done just by yielding in small way. First of all, I came to Nigeria one day. <laughs> I met this guy. Met this guy. He served me like, where's Licky? Like Licky was serving me. Come and sit down. Why are you saying? Licky was serving me. And uh, when we're done, I prefer to give people mantu more than money. Though this generation prefer money more than mantu. <laughs> but I prefer to give people... Mantu is not something special. It's something that comes from the bowels of your heart that can produce again and again. So I just looked at him. Why am I going to give this guy? So I put all my shirts on the bed. And I said, pick one. This guy went for the best one. Might not be the best one, but the one I love the most. I wanted to use prophetic, prophetic gift to, to corner and pay. No, that one, the Lord is in need of it, you know. But it was already late. So <laughs> when he picked it, it touched my heart. I said, Kai, this is how God works. Not knowing that the guy was serving me intentionally with a whole of his heart, with no single complaint. And he has been trusting God to travel. So when I did that, the next thing I just noticed is that somebody, he said somebody called him and said, come to Abuja, come and move a car from Abuja to Lagos. And they bought a flight ticket for him. So he wore that shirt in the plane and took the picture and sent it to me. So I knew it was intentional. You know the funny thing? He got to Abuja, they said they are not moving anything again. Let's go back to Lagos again on the air. <laughs> it was just, it was just God just arranged that to just cruise, cruise. The guy is the one that opened doors for me in Ireland. That I went to two weeks ago. A few years ago, I said a few years, some years ago, I have a guy. He went for a wedding. He wanted to do a wedding. I was saying, my mind, how can I reward this? How can I help this guy? So I went to go and look for a car, you know, a G4 by 4 So I drove them to the wedding. I was the driver. I'm the pastor, but I'm also the driver. So when they were done, service, giving, ah, it will make the Holy Spirit happy. And let me tell you something, the greatest reward of giving is no money. It's reputation you build in the Spirit. That heaven can walk through it. When you, listen to me, there's a level you get to that heaven is so loyal to you that your children will benefit on, on, of an answer prayer they didn't ask. And some of you, you are still struggling with your own generation. And you know the generation came, that came after us, it was Juju they were following. So we have a lot of work to do. And just one instruction to just live a selfless life, we just preserve you and the next generation. Then you are showing levels. That clothes that you're supposed to give to somebody, you are using it to show you are better than them. Are you with me? I think they are listening to me on this side. You are tired of me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, like, you look like a politician. <laughs> yeah? It looks like Baba or boys. <laughs> hmm. So, man of God, when this guy finished their wedding, I was driving them to the house. And I looked through the mirror. I saw the wife. She wasn't happy. On your wedding day, that's strange. So, what's the matter? He said to me, The house we're going to, he sent to. No cutting, nothing. I said, really? I said, I'm not aware. I said, what I will do to you is that tell me the nearest hotel. I will lodge you there for three days. And I will keep you there. Any money you've gathered during the wedding, fish to us within three days, whatever you can do, then go back and move there. And we were happy. And that was all. Fifteen years later, I was on Instagram. I had. I wanted to do my grabs that I do every Thursday. Consistency is key in ministry. So as, and I have to be authentic and sincere. I said, guys, I'm tired, but I still just talk to you today. After, somebody just, they just sent me a message. Hey, PD, where do you want to go on vacation? Name it. The same person that I rented three days paid me, took me to the tallest building, tallest hotel in the world, took me to Dubai, booked a flat on top 14th floor, and we are just looking like this. Ah, is this how it is? 15 years. That you don't, you've forgotten. But let me tell you, seed don't die. It goes to the future to wait for you. And seed can be positive or negative. Which one do you carry? Which one do you carry?
Are you with me? If I forget, God says somebody is here, connected with is having issue with bed, bed wetting. In Jesus' name, this weekend is over. For that person, in Jesus' name. He said, you also tell some people that are faithful to this assignment. He said, that project, I will not partially sponsor it. I will fully, mark that word fully, I will fully sponsor it. In the name of the Lord Jesus, friend. In the name of the Lord Jesus, sir. I said, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on, say fully. Fully. Come on, say fully. Fully. When God speaks, I believe in what he says. Yes, he said, I'm not partial. I will fully sponsor it. I will fully sponsor it. I will fully sponsor it. So if you understand my voice and you're starting a work with Jesus in the realm of giving, give yourself a minimum of three years of consistency. You can't do six months you because giving touches your heart before it touches your hand. There is a lot that giving does in your heart more than what it does in your hands. And you have to allow God to take his time. Give God a minimum of three years consistency. Start small or keep doing it. Keep doing it. Let me tell you one of the demons that have been sent to the church of Christ. Is that demon that gives you excitement to receive when you have no soul? Is that demon that makes you to share testimony over receiving and there's no seed on the floor? And we know your father sold nothing. There is a little plan. The devil, devil is a giver. There's a little plan. Pastor, there is grain in the body of God. In which God keep, devil keep supplying your need so that you can remain selfish. So when, when it seems as if Prayers are answered, and you say, ah, somebody don't like me. You have to ask, actually, when you're in disobedience, when you disobey and ignore instruction, you ignore it, and you generate result. the time you give, you see attacks. The time you did not give, you see blessing. I say, it's the Lord's doing. It's not only God that answers prayer, so. And, we need to, and I'm saying that to a young generation. Be very careful. You are not smiling again. <laughs> just smile. Please, just give me a little bit of smile. I'm just trying to help you. Let me address one more thing. Are you still with me? There's one thing we call in business that is called Pareto analysis. Pareto analysis is when 20% of the people are doing 80% of the job. So like in church, 20% forms the entire... So I was, in a, I was watching the man of God preach. He said, we just saw an acre of land. We bought it and the man just came in and looked at the acre and said, we can build a church or Durham here within two weeks. And you know, everybody in the church shouted, hey, is the Lord's In my mind, I was like crying. That one man wanted to sow a seed. And all of you are shouting, you are not saying, where is my contribution? That is what we like in the body of us. But it's not the cancer of God. I can tell you, beyond what happens to your pocket, even with open heavens over your life. Even with what? Open the heavens over your life. And I want to challenge you to start now. Start now. Can I go a little bit deeper? Just one more step. One more step. I know I didn't follow notes, but it's okay. That's where I'm at home. Come on, man. Are you okay? Yeah. Am I preaching well? On the cutting edge? Boom. <laughs> don't mind me just to make you laugh because you have been so serious when I'm so serious, just, just, just serious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh thank you Jesus it's because of God's love for us it's because of God's love those he loves he chastised that word chastisement is, a, is not too much of a nice English but that word those he loves he trains Anytime God loves a man, he trains them. And one of the ways to train them is to begin to lead them in a way that will take them from selfishness to selflessness. Are you with me? Malachi chapter 3, very common. Bring all your tithes to the Lord's house. Don't, don't even read it. We know it often. It's one of, they've been using it to collect tithes from, for years from us. Some of you don't even care. No. Bring all the tithes that there might be what meat in my house. 
when you read a scripture like that, what God said is important, but why God said it is better. What God said, there's a generation that responds to what he says. But when you know why he says it, it's better. What he says is that bring all tithes into my house. But you need to understand why. God knew that there's going to be a gap of 400 years without him speaking. Between Malachi and Matthew, right? And he, come on now, right? Yes. And in Matthew, he knows that Jesus is going to come. So when he gave them that instruction and added the cross to it, by the time Jesus came, Jesus confirmed that they were obeying that instruction for over 400 years, even when everyone was quiet. That's a very great one. That's a very deep one that God will give instruction and over 450 years later, people are still obeying it. And God has not even, without heaven, updating it. And Jesus came and said, you guys, when it comes to your time, you are not playing game with it. But do you know why God gave that instruction? Because when Jesus came, he's supposed to turn the physical temple to supernatural temple. So one day, Jesus was on the cross. And the curtain of the temple is supposed to be turned from here to bottom. And Jesus, if the curtain was not torn, the assignment is not completed. And if the temple is not existing, there won't be a curtain that will turn. And if there's no resources in the temple, nobody will maintain the temple. So the reason God is insisting on tithe is because the day the conversion in the realm of spirit will operate from the natural to supernatural level, it's not money that stopped it. Can you imagine God having a 6,000 years plan? And Jesus came on the cross. And it's because somebody did not pay the tithe. That's when, when it was time for cutting to turn. There was no cutting there. And you will just think it's about cutting. It's not about cutting. It's about the divine agenda. It's about the program of God. You do have a clue what 1,000 era can do in the agenda of God. You do have a clue what a shirt will do. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Many years ago on campus, I think the guy was suffering from probably mental issue or having a sense of um, acceptance or whatever. So I, 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 it was the first time, you know, we came from a family that I said, the Lord is our help, you know. It's why we become born again. It was a prayer that lifted the generation before us, before we started investing on the generation after us. So when my mom has a bit of breakthrough, I was going to school, uni. That was the first time I resumed a semester with eight shirts. All of them are not new, but they are neat. Eight shirts, then one green suit. No, this one is far better. And the green that you struggle to get a shirt that match it, you know? <laughs> why you, why you laugh? My life is better now. I'm not ashamed of where I'm coming from. You, know, you just need to see those pictures and just thank God for where you came from. So in my mind, I said, ah, this semester, hmm, they're anointing with my head. Then with this clothes, the fellowship will know. So I've already, my mind begins to arrange the shirts with the suit and say, this one we buy. It's only one out of those shirts that fits in the suit. And I said, the day I want to leave prayers, or the day is my turn. Or the anointing is flowing and I want to come, you know, like a man of God. That is where I went. You know, then when the fellowship was just lifted and I was worshiping God. And I could hear the feeling in my heart. That brother beside me, give him one of the shirts. So because it's eight, I was grateful. At least I would give him a remaining cell. Then I got to the room, I wanted to pick the shirt. And straight on that green shirt, that was the first time I knew God can be specific. Specific, as if I go on like this or go this way, it will still go on that green, still go on that green. But because it was the season where there is a retreat, so my spiritual is still a bit stable. You no, know, it didn't take long because some obedience takes three years, do yearly insurance. So it was easy to just respond. So I picked the shirt, I went to fellowship, I gave it to the brother. And the brother saw like this. I didn't know there is more than shirt I gave to him. We were worshiping, he collected the shirt, he ran to his hostel, changed and wear the shirt, and came back to fellowship and said, let's take the shirt together. I didn't know it was just a shirt. For him, it was an acceptance. Because some are saying, God, when will you lead somebody to me without knowing them? And God says, you can hear me, and you are the one I want to lead, but you won't obey. 
in the. So I gave the guy shares. Man of God, that was the day I stopped buying Cluto. I didn't know that that singular obedience can open you to a realm whereby one day I packed shares in UK, I gave it at what 50. I gave it, don't say, ah, you know, the, we are looking, we, 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 in fact, I'm waiting to when I'm 50. We will become an industry fashion. You know, just boom like that. Is this how it is? But because I was not looking for receiving, when I saw, it's easier to not respond to what God is doing in your heart. Let me make a statement, brother and sister. If Holy Spirit is leading you and he has not led you to give, I will question the Holy Ghost that is leading you. Hmm? Come on, that's a tweet right there. Can I say it again? Yeah. If Holy Spirit is leading, I say, ah! You watch you, hey, but I don't know why Yaya yeah, is come. You you pray, you say, you say, ah, ah, it's in Sawas, I was not, ah, Kabolo, in Gedo, Akuku, Belege, Emperor, Godoba, Yeke, Kembro, Kofu, Fufu, Fuse, after six hours. Thank God for your life. If you enter a walk with God, and God cannot tell you, give, 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 I question that walk with God. So Abraham has a close. Abraham did all the ministry was doing with Jesus, with God. He had God, God say, relocate, he relocated. He had God say, I will bless you, bless. Said this, said this, and it was wonderful. The one day God said, Abraham, come. Take your son, your only son, whom you love, and go ahead and sow him. You know, and sacrifice him. So the guy got there, he sacrificed his son. And the response, if you find that scripture, you can give it to me. It's in Genesis. Get, get that scripture for me, please. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Genesis 22, find that scripture for me. Yeah, and Abraham picked up the knife. Yeah, go to next verse. Look at this scripture. Go to next verse. Go to Nezvas. So, they do not lay hand on that boy. The angel said, Do not ask him in any way, for I now know, for now I know that you truly fear me. When I read this scripture, I always busted into Christ. I say, God, this man has followed you for years. Now it is now you are now knowing that he fears you. So, what has he been doing all the years? Say, Now I know you fear me. And if God can say that when he's giving you specific instruction to give, what he has to give does not matter. Does not matter. Does not matter for giving. What I'm trying to tell you tonight, faith rest, is that if you are not on that journey, start tonight. Because if God has not dealt with you in that area of giving, you have not started a sincere work with God. Because for God so loved the world, I give. Giving is God's love language. Is God's what? Love language. That's why when you are not asking, you see gifts, because that's his language. And when, yes, because in the realm of finance, it's not even what you give that determines what you get. Before you knew what to give, what to give, God has been giving to you. The mercy of God is upon all his creation. But I'm telling you, there's nothing like I'm spiritual and you are stingy. Final scripture. I think I've done well tonight. Final scripture. Give it to me in um, <laughs> message translation. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through to 5. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through to 5. You can give it to me in message translation. That will be nice. Thank you. Don't be naive. There are difficult times ahead. This is the same time. As the hand approaches, people is going to be self what? Absorbed. Money what? Self what? So there's something about self in the end time. Stock up profane, contemptuous appearance, food and cross. And this we should pay attention to. Praise God. Let me give you a bullet point and I close. So how do you start a journey of giving? How do you start a journey of giving? Are you blessed tonight?
Number one, pray to God to help you. Pray for a giving spirit. Pray for a giving spirit. I don't want stingy people around me, so I pray. Whatever level you are, whether you're a man or God, whatever, if I see that you, you are, you, you are, what do you call that now? High fisted. I can't be, I can't be close to you. Because the day God will want to use you and open you in the spirit to reveal some things, you'll be waiting for the day I will invite you to preach before you share it. I, I, won't, I won't be close to you. You have to pray for a giving spirit. Lord, give me, break this. And it depends on your foundation and your journey before you enter into the kingdom. Lord, give me the ability. The number two thing you do is that you wake up tomorrow morning, as in tomorrow morning, everything in your house that you don't need, that shoe you want to wear in December, you know, share. He said to, John said to them, they that have two, give her one. Give her one. The greatest reward of giving that I've seen in my life is not returns, it's joy. There's a supply of the Holy Spirit that hits your spirit, man, when you obey the Holy Spirit. You sit down, but your spirit is dancing. One of the reasons why depression is high, where we came, where we live in, but people are singed. There is joy, like joy of salvation, there is joy of giving. So pray for giving spirit. Number two, empty your house for what you don't need and share it with people. Then number three, look for little needs around you. I'm just giving you little, little tips. Look for little needs around you. For little, little, wake up tomorrow, you're walking, you see somebody just crying. You don't, you don't, it, don't use the summit to say whether they are fake people or ask for money. Just that 20 near right now, 50, that just give. You are training yourself. You're training yourself. Separate a percentage of your income. I encourage people to pay tight because you can't say when God look when money increases to pay percentage is difficult. Look and don't wait till that time. I'm telling you, it's easier to pay ten out of ten than to pay one thousand out of uh, ten thousand, then hundred thousand out of one million. Hey, show little show show concern about little needs. Come to church today and just say, oh, they need this bulb. This bulb, the ah, eye, you just say, God, just go and buy it. Present it. You are training yourself in the act of giving. Hmm? My wife always tells me, say, when you go to people's house, they don't go empty-handed. You are going there to eat rice. Bottle of water you won't go with. And if you're tight, I don't stop. And if you're not tight yet, ask God. I'm not here to come and prove uh, you must pay tight. The only thing I've noticed, man of God, in my work with Jesus, is that I tell people, don't wait to when others are reaping before you start learning to sow. You've that wasted years. That wasted years. And when you obey God in giving, always ask God for response. Ask God for response, not just by giving. He will always show you a sign that he's happy with you. He does it. There's happy with you. Then you go to a meeting, there are 1,000 people there. And the pastor is a preacher. Then one day we just enter into prophetic, you are the only way we fish out. How that would be worth? Why are they fishing you that? It might just be God just trying to use that to honor you. It does anything, just make it good for you. I do this giving to a point that he has, I'm a Jew. I don't buy things at ordinary price. I don't buy things at the original price. It's not. I will buy things at the, I pick something in the counter, I see the price. Before I get to pay the price, I don't know where they change the price in between. God is a rewarder. If I lift my voice now and say, in the name of Jesus, we will reap what you sow. Will your amen sound like thunder? Somebody is smiling. <laughs> the pastor, don't go there. <laughs> Will your amen please sound like thunder? Hallelujah. Whatever Jesus does in our lives by the Holy Spirit, 
If he does not deal with selfishness, he has not completed his job. People that are selfish will end up wasting resources of heaven. They cannot place finance upon them. I'm done. Let's rise to our feet. Are you blessed tonight? He asked me to talk to you about it. That's why I did. Do huh? you still love me? And Pastor Move didn't send me. No, it's a very simple man. So it's not about, you know. Some of us, heaven has instructed us that even if he has a name, may the Lord bless us be able to give it. So it's not you, and you know. No, he asked people. I am one of them. <laughs> I am one of them. Backing it up, saying, man of God, we love you, we believe in you, uh, we, uh, we, we support you. And he has never once. Ask me for anything. Never. In over 20 years, say, oh, man of God, ask me for anything, anything. Anything. Give. Say after me, say give. Say loud, I say give. give. You know the way you respond when I say you are blessed. That's why I want to say give. give. Say I'm not stingy. I'm a giver. Amen. I give to God, and I give to God's people. And I'm happy as a giver. Jesus' name. Let me give you a promise. If you start that journey today, by the time I see you next year, you won't need a balance in your bank for you to execute divine projects. As soon as you say, I want to do it, reputation in the spirit will corner me. That's how it works. A reputation in the spirit. The corner man. Corner man. I just be wondering, God, is this? When the Bible says, build your treasure in heaven, it's free. You know, that was use natural resources to build reputation in the spirit. And then you'll be able to secure loyalty of God. Loyalty of God. And one day your children will go to, go to go to school and they will just meet a friend in class. And say I and the parents of that friend will say, I like your child. I want the two of them to go to the same school. And say, I don't have money for it. Say, consider it paid. Just like that. And I say, when did this happen? Divine loyalty. Start the journey. If you are sincere with me and you know that you are struggling with giving, and you want me to pray with you, raise your hands to heaven. If you are sincere with me, raise your hands to heaven. And I will pray with you. Give me my hand. I pray with you. Thank you for that response. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Everybody pray in the Holy Ghost two minutes. Kabala Tando Vakambro Kosu Palakasha. Oh, Malando Sika Prando Sakando Shikefre Ketepe Lokosa Prando Sakata. Maya Gadombe Gede Broko Fakanda Agada Broko Tsipu Bakataya. Zengede Broko Sope Legebo Shakandola. Oh, Jesus, we give you this. Malagada boko zobege de boko zobege de bosha. Mando sike vengo talando saha. Ekebendo sika tala kasha. Magende brekute veke te liga dambrosha. Eginde brokoto veke dembra katabo. Masha katapa. Lekedengo brako sike te. Masha konde lego zebe. Ege brako to lige de brakatalaba. We yield to every promptings of the spirit. We yield to every promptings of the spirit. We yield to every promptings of the spirit. We yield. We have capacity to yield, to yield, to yield to every prompting of the spirit. Lando shaka palando seke. We yield to every prompting of the spirit. Allah for so vege de bosha. Allah for so vege de bosha. Allah for so vege de bosha. Where's that guy that is standing? Oh, yeah. He said, I will show you mercy. He said, I will show you mercy. I will show you mercy. It's God's, I will show you mercy. I will show you mercy. And I bring you to that terrain by the mercy of God. Let the mercy of the Lord overshadow you. Let it cover for your weaknesses. And begin to populate your life with grace. To be able to see and respond. In the name of Jesus. A season of instruction is coming over you. 
and I pray that you will hear that sound. It will be clear and you will respond to it. And God will take you to that terrain of our borders. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm saying to you, you will go to nations as if you are going to towns. By the power of the Holy Spirit, the mercy of God will initiate it. And grace will yield to every instruction they give it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. We give you praise and honor. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm hearing the sound of a lady under the sound of my voice. Your, a burden is switching from you, from probably doing ministry to doing business. But you are asking yourself, is God say I should leave this to do another one? But I hear a sound in my spirit say you should do the two. One of the things you must understand is that the dealings of God now is an addition to the last dealing, not a replacement. It's what? An addition to the last dealing, not a replacement. And I'm praying for that person that God's going to give you balance in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That while you are pursuing one, the other will not become naked in your place. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I announce over everyone in that sound my voice, every project, fully supplied. I said, fully supplied. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your blessings over this house. Thank you for your servants. Thank you for his family. We leave you blessings with them. Giving you, asking you for multiples of grace for new season and new levels. All to the glory of your name. In Jesus' precious name we pray. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. Give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. What a word. It's significant. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 36. The Bible, one of the earliest cultures, the Bible spoke to us about the early church was their commonality of resources. Can I take in, wrote a book, The Midas Church, in which he fought so many excesses on money that has been preached in the church. But he kept emphasizing something, that he believed that if the entire church was sincere and faithful, to basic tithe and offering that there will be no need in the church. Many a times the reason why we have so many orchestrations is because there is so much disobedience. And so they have to find a way to pull it out and pull it out. The Bible says there was a man called Joseph. It was named Barnabas by the apostles. It was translated the son of encouragement if anybody tells you that giving is not significant is lying one of the first set of people that the, the apostles gave a name to as a son of encouragement is Barnabas and why did they give it it was a Levite of the country having lunch sold it and brought it give us our encouragers some people just keep looking at your face every time. Ah, see this pastor. It will be done. It's faithless assembly where we do everything by faith and in rest. The question is, yes, it is true. But God use somebody. May you be the next person they can use. They brought money and laid their purpose for it. By Acts 13, Separate me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work which I have called them. The Bible says, and they had John as their assistant. Suddenly, the giver too needed to be helped. One of the things I want you to go on with tonight is, there is no one person here that is that permanent giver. It's a cycle. But do you know something? By the end of Acts chapter 13, the help of Barnabas, John, the assistant, stopped going with them. Mm -hmm. Barnabas did his own without restraint. When it was Barnabas' turn to receive help, we saw John. 
By Acts chapter 15, Paul said, this is not the type of man that should go with us. But do you know something about Barnabas? He was the one that still held on to John. He should go. May, you, may God give you a capacity that no matter what men have done to you, it will not change who you are. If there was any person that should say, I will not even give any chance to anybody again, it should be Barnabas. I have been a giver. When it was my turn, they held it back. And again, he said, let him go. And eventually, when you get to the book of Timothy, Paul himself came back to him and said, bring John Mark to me. He's profitable for the ministry. In any which way, this cycle must continue. But at the same time, if you have been, if you have not received what you expected at one point or the other, you must not become the offended. Barnabas did not receive what he expected, but he never became the offended. In fact, he was the one that still fought for John Mark. It's still profitable. Let's let's hold him. Let's pull him along. Are you following me, Trevor? So tonight, we all need it. You know, there are some of you in this church where you say, "Ah, I want to do it." Paul, Wally, we already we always know the people we can. Have you noticed? I don't want to mention some name. Ah, Ashina. Oh, is the generator man coming? He will be there. If the man that serves us is coming, he will be there. Who is changing the bulb? Mm, he will be there. Who is carrying pastor to the meeting? Mm, he will be there. Why can't you be there? You go. Until you got to a point that you become unconscious that that same people, those same people, need their own cycle of help to reach them. Because there is nobody that is an island. That's the way God designed it. Give me a giving spirit. Pray that prayer that Pastor Tipo raised. Because there is something in your hand. If the church is faithful, it will continue. That cycle will move on. It does not matter. You may not have what somebody has, but you have something. Give me a giving spirit. Nothing must overcome it. No offense must overcome it. No matter what men have done to me, nothing must overcome it. I must not be weary in well-doing. Because the Bible says in this season, you will receive your reward. You must not be weary. Somebody overcome everything the enemy has thrown on the pathway. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let me tell you, giving is powerful. I know we've seen all the drama, but I know seeds that I'm seeing building for 20 years. That's why I imagine that if truly most things you do is God. 2005, I was in the altar. First rock was there. And I started, that was the first meeting I called the Faith Rest Streams. 2005. Noka. I said I wanted atmosphere where the word of God was going to be taught. I needed it to be like a camp. And one thing I don't know how to do is to take money from people. Then I went and I emptied all my account. Gave it to one of our friends. Took the food. Went to Fashok. He was in a school that had we could house people there. I said, let people come. So we had a weekend of cheering. That is the last time in my life. I have ever needed, I've ever wanted to do anything ministerially, and I've needed to talk to anybody. It's 2023. I know seeds that don't die. So I don't know how people say they give to God and they. T- I'm telling you. I've been in the Bible since 2006. I have never borrowed to do ministry. From the day when I, whether it was in the sitting room, I did it. Does, does, do I look like someone that is even desperate for anything? And I, because some seeds don't die. And that's how we, you know, when we do pure land, we even invite people, they come, we'll say, we'll be even be giving them money to, to, to go back. There's almost strange thing recently, man of God. We had a meeting here two weeks ago. Two guys came from Akuba. They drove a bike. 
ada. Jadi, hmm. si awas, those normal people they go. To... And when they wanted to go and seize the bike, I said, you cannot come and give me a potential. Say, Pastor, I'm alone. I'm not worried. We did everything we could do. The, phone, the bike didn't move a paper. So I told myself, I said, okay. Oh. I said, I did the hunger and task for righteousness. But they shall be free. They know that if they get here, whatever they need to go back, we have it. See, we can make impact when we open our hearts. The word of God is with us. The Holy Spirit is in us. What is remains is a open heart. Paul told some people, say, our heart is open to you. Be open to you. Go out, look around, and see where we can make impact. It does not take much to make impact on people's lives. You will see radical transformation. You will see people do things that you can never imagine. Pay a visit. Recently, one of my friends lost her husband. It was a shock. And I told myself, I will visit that family every week. I never knew the children until the, the first day I saw the children was the day their father died. You see the way those children relate with me now. You would think I'm their father. And the lady just put to bed again. It's one of our fellow. Inka, when we go there, you would think that me and those children have been. Abi, even when my own wife last week just put to bed, one says I was still in their house. That's how to bless people. You think they will forget? You want to call any problem? Moshe Leso. And this uh, is my. I want to build my house, my house, my house, my house. And it's God's house. If you build it, it will rebuild the devourer for your sake. Are you following me, church? Lord, expand my heart. It's a disappointment. Even me myself, I'm crying for it more. Give me a given spirit. Let me be there for people. Move you out. There are so many people that are amazed about what God is doing in our church, what God is saying in our church, but they are looking for somebody that will open his mouth to just say, can you come along? It's as simple as that to make impact. It's as simple as that to make impact in people's lives. Thank you, Jesus. I'm leaving me all my life. Take hold.
one woman followed Jesus. They called her the Syrophoenician woman. The Bible says she kept saying, Jesus, come heal my daughter. She's vexed of the devil. And Jesus did not answer one. Then the disciples looked at Jesus and said, can this woman just turn her away? Now, there was a woman crying for a situation that was not heard by God. But there were disciples that could talk to Jesus concerning what was not even their situation. And they have access. They could say, Jesus, turn this woman away. When a woman was calling for her own situation and God did not hear. And Jesus said, woman, what do you want me to do? I can't give the children's bread. So one of the problems we have that we can get so familiar with certain things we receive that we put so much little value on them. He said, I can't give the children bread to dogs. And the woman said, even the dogs eat crumbs. The children could talk to God about them, themselves and about other people. The woman had no right to talk to God about herself. <laughs> you didn't get what I'm saying? That was the bread of the children in comparison to the crumb of the woman but the woman said but the dogs too hate comes Jesus said I've not seen this type of faith what I want to tell you is that there is something you despise but a little of it can make a word for somebody you might say what is in bread but the, the crumb the, the ability to say God you can say God somebody has been praying some of you God said not now that's still an answer the woman of the Syrophoenician went no answer he said, God, you have done nothing, but God spoke to you. That's, an, that's bread. If some people just got a crumb of that, are you following me? Some of you are in your right senses tonight because just of this type of gatherings. If somebody just got a crumb, that's why tonight I don't want you to go and say anything is too small. Do everything that is within your power and within your might for every man that God will give you opportunity to. It does not matter how big or how small. The crumb is the world to the woman. And Jesus said, your child is ill. I send you tonight in the name of Jesus with capacity to do so little that will be so great in people's lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your little steps will become like the rushing of an army. Like the steps of the lepers. They will become like the rushing of an army. Somebody will see your face and say, your face looks like the face of God. When you smiled on me, it was like God smiled on me. When you smiled on me, it was like heaven opened on me. And you will say, when, when, when did I do this? When did I do this? Whatsoever you have done to the least of my brethren, you have done it to me. Unconsciously, you will make impact in people's life. As the Lord put in you the capacity and the desire to love his kingdom and to love his people. Even when you are not set out to do big things, you will do small things that will transform into big things. A little one shall become a thousand. A thousand shall become a great nation. The seal of the Lord shall perform it in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody give the Lord a big hand of praise. Hallelujah. How many of you are blessed with Pastor Dick tonight? Thank you.